Welcome back, folks. I'm Roger Ramsey, the executive chef instructor at the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. It's my dear friend, sous chef and co-teacher Bobby Thompson. Uh, we appreciate we've got another year's worth of EC3 Real Cooks coming up. Uh, today, well, you know in Kentucky you can count on two things happening in the summer. It's going to be hot and it's going to be humid. So today we're going to try to cook less but still put out some more food. We're going to make some some main course salads. We're going to set out, uh, let's see, how about some Caesar salad? It's got a little bit of attitude with some uh, croutons and bacon, homemade croutons, uh, a little bacon, some grilled chicken, we'll go with that. We'll make the classic Cobb salad. Uh, more bacon, imagine that. Uh, boiled eggs, avocado, cheese, uh, and the like. We're going to put together a salad nichoir. And Can you say that? No. Salad nichoir is from the Nice region of France. Uh, a little different because it's got tuna in it. Uh, we're going to use some canned tuna, but we'll give you some tricks if you want to fancy it. I'll make it for the folks you love. Uh, we're going to put together one dish that I'm not really sure it's a salad, but it's got lettuce in it and a dressing, so we're going to call it a salad. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a Jamie Oliver recipe. He calls it parcels. Uh, his uses duck. We're using chicken thighs. So it'll be a lettuce wrap with some noodles and some chicken and some tofu and chili sauce and hoisin sauce. And I think if you try it, you're going to dig it. And then last but not least, we're going to make a little Capri salad. Uh, the island of Capri. So that's just tomato, mozzarella, and, and a little bit of attitude. So if you give us just a minute, where we get started, we're going to do our salads today. And we're going to start with a Cobb salad, uh, a very standard salad that you can get in almost any restaurant. One of the first things we're going to do uh, is actually we're going to make our dressing first. And it's a very simple Caesar dressing, or a dressing for a Cobb salad. We will have some uh, red wine vinegar, some Dijon mustard, and a little bit of oil. And what you can do to make this a little bit more fun, um, if you ever have a mason jar, you could mix it in that and then you just shake it all together. We're actually gonna do it in one of our, um, well, maybe, there we go. We're gonna do it here in one of our bowls. The ingredients that we have for today's salads, they will be at the bottom of our page that you can get into. And you can always go back and watch these again as they will stay on our YouTube channel. Throw a little bit more. And then we have our oil is the last thing we're gonna add to this. And the thing when you are mixing dressings, like this one, is you really have to mix it. You've got one shot at this. Uh, because there's oils and vinegars there, they don't really mix well. And so we will need to really mix this good enough so that it all comes together. Gonna need just a little bit of salt and pepper. Mix it one more time. And there's our dressing. We're gonna set that aside. And we'll start on our main salad. We're gonna use romaine lettuce. And one of the things you need to know about all lettuce is how it grows. It actually starts underground and it comes up and flowers. So We've already done it today, but usually what you need to do is take your lettuce apart and make sure you clean it out um, because there'll be a lot of dirt and things that can get stuck in between the leaves, especially way down inside the head of the lettuce. Now with romaine lettuce, you can chop it up however you want to. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. I am not a big fan of the rib that is in the uh, romaine lettuce, so I'm actually going to cut that out. and then just set aside those pieces. <clears throat> and for this salad, you'll probably need about six or seven um, leaves of the romaine lettuce. So this will not take you very long and then we'll do a big cut and we'll be finished. All right, through the magic of TV, we have got all of our romaine lettuce leaves cut. We're just gonna simply stack them up on top of each other 
doesn't matter where the big ones are, where the little ones are, they're all gonna get cut. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna roll this to all up together. And our recipe calls for a coarse chop on the romaine lettuce. Anytime it's a coarse chop, I will do one cut actually through the middle here to give it its width. And then I'm just gonna go down the line, probably about an inch, three quarters of an inch, and I'll cut them all. And that will give us the base to our Caesar salad. The next thing that we'll do is we're gonna add some hard boiled eggs. Anybody that knows me knows these are not my favorites at all. Um, but in this salad, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna quarter these. We've already hard boiled them, we've already peeled them, so they're ready to go. And to quarter them is very simple. Through one way, turn it to the side, cut it another time. And those are done. And our recipe called for four of them, so we'll spread these out as well. Um, the next thing on ours is our chicken. Now we took the chicken, salt and pepper, um, put it into the roasting oven, we roasted it off for a little while. We have a rough, very just pulled almost cut on these. So we're gonna cut this up just a little bit more, just kind of a chop so that it's more bite size, a little bit easier to get in. And in case we find a small bone, we'll get that out. But cutting up roasted chicken is not very difficult. We did do this with the skin on. And the reason we wanted the skin on is actually it will crisp up and you'll have some, there'll be a texture about it. It has a little bit of crunchiness to it. Um, it adds a little bit more to it. Now we don't quite need all of this. That piece is way too big. Salad there. We're also gonna take a couple pieces of bacon. We're gonna chop that up. One thing I will tell you, if have a sharp knife. All the cutting and things that we do, we sharpen ours, Chef and I do, uh, at least once a week, if not more often than that. It really does help out tremendously. So we have our bacon now on it. Now we're gonna do some avocado. Avocado is very easy to cut. Make sure it's ripe, first of all. You're gonna take your knife, once you get your knife in, all you're gonna do is basically just walk it around the entire avocado. And most of the time it will finish up right where back where you started at. So you have two halves, twist, pull apart. Take the base of your knife, put it into the pit, twist, and it comes out. So now what we're gonna do, actually I'm gonna cut this inside of the skin and all I'm doing is I'm just going to make some thin slices here. And so now I can, uh, there we go. I will be able to cut these out. I can put these thin slices on our cob salad. Next thing we have is some blue cheese. It does not take a lot of blue cheese. Just simply going to spread that over top of it. And again, you can add what you want. I love blue cheese. I would add a bunch of it. And the last thing we're going to do is we're gonna take a few cherry tomatoes. Just gonna cut these in half. I'm 
gonna spot these around. And then we're going to just drizzle our dressing over top of it. And here is our Cobb salad. Uh, last year we did this, we got some calls on it, some emails asking how we did it, and we'll show it to you again. It's a Calabrese uh, salad, which is a very simple salad. Today we have five ingredients, but that's about it. Uh, one of the things we do is we first are gonna cut up a tomato. Sometimes that can be a difficult thing for some people to do. Uh, it does take some practice, but it's something that you can do at home instead of having to buy sliced tomatoes. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we actually cut off the top of it, which gives it us an ability to set it down on a flat surface. We do use a serrated knife. It seems to cut better through it. And then just holding our hand on top and going right through will give us our slices. So on a Cabrillo salad, it is very, very simple. There is a tomato. And we're always gonna salt and pepper the tomatoes. We're gonna follow that up with, we have mozzarella cheese. Then we're gonna put some pepperoni, a large pepperoni. And then we start the process all over again. So I'll do a tomato, a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got slices of cheese. You can buy the mozzarella cheese already sliced. You don't have to. Um, you can cut it or you can buy it pre-sliced. Then back again, a little salt and pepper, mozzarella, pepperoni, and we'll do one more. And one more pepperoni. Now we're going to take a little bit of basil. This is fresh basil. Sprinkle on top. And then we're actually going to finish it off with a little balsamic vinegar. Just a slight drizzle. And there we have a crazy salad. Okay, Mr. Bobby's made a couple salads, now it's my turn. I'm gonna do that salad nichois. Uh, nichois is referred to the Nice region of France. Uh, it is an entree salad, it's main course salad. We're going to have the greens in it, of course. For us, we're using romaine and iceberg, and just like Mr. Bobby did, cut those veins out of the romaine. And just a little bitter, and a little too much texture there. Uh, the down, the little, little bit leaves on the inside, you're good to go. Those big veins probably need to come out. Uh, let's start with our salad dressing, shall we? So, first we've got a lemon. Yeah, squeeze the juice out of the lemon. Squeeze it into your fingers and catch those seeds. Now, I can squeeze a lemon. I got great big pork chop heads. If you don't, what you can do, let me get rid of these seeds, I'll show you what you can do. Grab that lemon in a pair of tongs. Just like that, turn it around backwards. Now we've got a lemon squeezer. Hey, a multitasker, how about that? So that's juice from one lemon. We are going to need, what else? About two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Mustard is not coming out. Mustard is very uh, beneficial in creating emulsification. Emulsification is when you take two things that don't get along and put them together and make them get along. Kind of like kids at home. So we're going to use the mustard as the emulsifier. You can also use egg yolk, but use pasteurized eggs, not necessarily fresh eggs because that risk of salmonella. What else do we need? We need a tablespoon of honey, a little sweetness complement all that lemon juice. 
about a tablespoon. Then we're gonna put the spurs to it. Now, it's blended together. Not much more than that. Certainly not emulsified because there's nothing to emulsify yet. A little salt and pepper. Then we need our oil. Now, had I thought ahead, which often I don't, I could have laid the towel down on the table around the bowl, keep it from dancing quite so much. Kids in class, when they have to make salad dressings, work in pairs. So one will hold the bowl, the other one will whisk. Seems to work out well. Our honey mustard vinaigrette. Let's see what we got. More salt. Now, Mr. Bobby finished up his salad and dressed it all at once. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to dress my greens separately, then build the salad. We do not need all that dressing. Let me offer a word on sanitation here real quick. Mr. Bobby and I are cooking for ourselves. And for those that we care about, if you're making this food for somebody else, realize that it is ready to eat. You don't need to be putting bare hands into it. Even washed bare hands. Um, if you're putting it out there for somebody else, you need to make sure you're gloved up and a layer of sanitation put between you and the folks you're feeding. You're cooking for yourself, you're cooking for your family. Those rules are different. That's a bunch of salad. Blue there's gonna sit right there. Okay. Now it's all about the dressings, right? Let's see what we're putting in there. We've got, I'm without a cutboard. Excuse me, just a moment. So now it's all about the dressings for the, for the salad. We're gonna put on there a couple of boiled eggs. Mr. Bobby does not like boiled eggs, I do. Let's sit out some eggs. Shall we? And that one's for me. Okay, what else do we have? We've got some cucumber. Got a little crunch, a little freshness. Green on green. What else do we have? We have some potatoes, of all things. Now we talked about not cooking. We're not cooking. Those came out of a can. If you want to cook your own potatoes, you most certainly may. We're trying to keep the house cool, so these came straight out of a can, already cooked, already peeled, rather well seasoned, not a bad deal. They sit right there on the shelf at Miss Kroger's waiting for you to come get them. That ought to do. One of my favorite things, so green beans. A little bunch here. A little bunch there, a little bunch over there somewhere. And then, some tuna. This is canned tuna, solid white albacore. It costs a little bit more, but it, it's worth it. It's a tasty fish. Uh, if you wanna make this really something fancy, something special for your people, go ahead and buy you a nice piece of fresh tuna and sear it off. Don't worry about the old canned stuff. Even if it's good canned stuff, fresh is gonna be better when it comes to tuna. Uh, Mr. Bobby, could I have some of your cherry tomatoes, please? Now, we've got all that fat in the olive oil. The fish is kind of fatty. Uh, we need something to cut that. What we're gonna use for that is the acidity and the sharpness of capers. Capers are a brined seed from a caper berry bush. A little goes a long way, they're pretty sharp. I love them, some folks don't. They don't have to, I buy their share. And because 
It's from the area of Nice. We need some Nice olives. That one's for me. And then to make it pretty, just a couple bright red spots of tomato. Now, all that stuff we put on there, the green beans, the tuna, the eggs, hasn't been seasoned. So we're gonna give it just a touch of salt. Season it from a height. Then we're gonna take just a touch of our dressing, make sure our potatoes and our fish, everything's gonna taste good. So. Even if you can't say nichois, just remember, it's a nice salad. They are salad nichois. Folks, we're gonna make a Caesar salad now. And Caesar salad's not so much about the salad itself as it is the dressing. And there are a few components that are ubiquitous to Caesar dressing. One of those happens to be our pickled fish, the anchovy. I can hear folks groaning all the way from their couch. The problem with anchovy is most people will try an anchovy and they say, oh, I don't like that. They're pretty harsh. They're salty, uh, might even be a little bit stringy. You don't want to eat anchovy as an anchovy. But here's what we're going to do. We'll take out these little anchovy fillets, maybe just about three or so. And we're going to put those in our salad dressing as a background season, a little hum, a little flavoring. Folks aren't gonna realize they're eating the little fishes. I promise. They're not gonna know it. They're probably gonna like it because they're not gonna know that the fish is there. So, we'll put those right back where they came from for next time. I don't dig anchovies by themselves. For a Caesar dressing, it's pretty, pretty special. So we've got our anchovies in a bowl, a little bit of minced garlic. Now we've got to mash them together, make a paste. Matter of fact, if you have a food processor, knock it out in that. If you have a blender, you can knock it out in that. If you have a mortar and pestle, all the better. Make that paste in it. Parmesan cheese. The recipe calls for creme fraiche, which is a product somewhere between sour cream and heavy cream. We're not gonna use that. We're gonna use a little bit of low-fat Greek yogurt. Why? Somebody say why, cause I like it. Try to get it loosened up enough that we can start building emulsification. Generally, it works the other way around. You have to tighten it up. Like the yogurt, the cheese, the little fishes, all working against me to get it emulsified. We dress our greens, which is Romaine with the ribs cut out just like we had done earlier. And there is a Caesar salad. Rather unassuming, not impressive, but a Caesar salad nonetheless. So, let's do a little something for it. What we've got here. We've got a couple of chicken thighs. <laughs> Folks, I did temp out that chicken. I think Mr. Bobby helped at 165 degrees. It should not be red. So our chicken, I'm sorry, our salad just lost a lot of its attitude. We're not putting that in there. I'd love to. 
but it can't. It ain't worth making somebody sick over. But we still have our croutons. And we still have our bacon. And we still have some cheese. Folks, I'm thoroughly disappointed, but you can't risk making somebody sick. I'd rather set that out for my wife and my boy and say enjoy that salad than to set this out Somebody turned up sick, and I said, get, get well cards instead. So our salad lost its attitude, but it's still a salad. I'm gonna go over here and pout for a minute. So what we've got, a hot pad, some hot oil. We've got a couple boneless skin on thighs uh, that has been seasoned with salt and pepper and five spice powder. Five spice powder, you get to all the Asian markets, most of the grocery stores now. It's cinnamon and anise and the warm spices and well, it's just kind of a special blend all to itself. What we want to do, I took these and opened them up, cut the bones out so that they would lay flat to cook. The idea is that we'll get some crisp on that skin like the Peking duck would have had for Jamie Oliver's dish. So we're going to lay our chicken in skin side down, hot oil, maybe a little hotter. Now we're going to let it cook hard until we get a little crisp on that skin. Uh, what we'll do after the chicken's cooked is we're going to dice it up. Uh, it will be mixed in lettuce cups with some noodles, uh, some dressing, a little tofu, and uh, some other goodness like that. So I will be here working on this chicken for a few minutes. Then I've got some rice noodles that I'm going to have to steep. And Mr. Bobby in the meanwhile is putting together our sauces and our dressing for our lettuce cups. Okay. It's very simple, it's just three ingredients. We have some hoisin sauce um, that you can buy from any of your local grocers. It calls for four tablespoons. Ooh, that's about enough. Um, the great thing about cooking is you don't have to follow all of the instructions exactly as they're done. Now, if we're on the baking shop side, you do need to follow all the instructions, make sure you have the right amounts of the different ingredients. But here on the cooking side, we get to um, kind of flavor it the way we want to. Now, we do have garlic paste. Um, and ask for garlic in this, and then it's gonna be mashed up. About one clove is about the size of the last digit on your pinky finger. So we'll put that in, and then we need the juice from some limes. And one of the key things when you're juicing any, um, any fruit is to make sure you roll it out. And what you're trying to do, most people have opened up an orange or seen the inside of an orange and there's little pockets of, of juice, little bubbles, so to speak, of juice. You wanna break all of those up as much as you can. And by doing that, that'll allow more juice to actually get out when you cut it open. So I'm just gonna cut this in half. Hold my hand up over it so I stop any of the seeds that could be coming out. You can also use a, um, oh, we've got one here. Chef Ramsey uses it. He always prevents the seeds from coming out. It's a mesh. We have our lime, we have our hoisin, we have our garlic and we're just going to mix this together. And again, it takes a lot to kind of get all of that together. Poison has a little bit of oil in it, and oil and lime juice don't typically mix well together, so you've really got to mix it to make sure that they get together. And so that is how you make the hoisin sauce for our hoisin crispy chicken lettuce parcels. We'll be right back as we will end up adding all of these ingredients together and putting them out on the plate. Okay, while y'all were looking, I finished off the chicken, uh, those chicken thighs, uh, cut it down, finished it off with some green onion, it's cashews and a touch of honey. Uh, I've made some rice noodles, uh, 
handy thing about the rice noodles is you don't have to cook them. You put them in hot water, let them sit for five minutes. Uh, if you don't have rice noodles, don't like them, you can use plain old spaghetti. It's going to work just as well. Uh, what else have I done? Mr. Bobby made the hoisin sauce dressing. I cooked a little tofu, heated it up with in sesame oil, and I think we're about ready to start making our wraps. So, so what we're going to do, take a handful of noodles, which aren't everywhere. Goes into each one of the lettuce cups. There we go. So, Mr. Bobby's dressing, let's put a little bit on our noodles. Gotta make them taste good. Our chicken that's cooked all the way through with cashews and a little spring onion. Our tofu. Some folks don't like tofu. I do. We just had the conversation about tofu. It's really good at taking on whatever you flavor it with. We have here a little sweet chili sauce. So all we're going to do is little drops, particularly where the tofu's at, because we want to season it up. We want to flavor it. It tastes good. So sprouts. They're spicy, they're crispy, they're wonderful. This is clover and alfalfa, I believe. And in case anybody says it's not a salad so far, we'll put sprouts on. There has to be a salad, right? And last but not least, a little more crunch, a little sesame seed. And I left everything in the way. So folks, that is our take on Jamie Oliver's crispy duck and lettuce parcels. We're just gonna call it chicken lettuce wraps. And it fits in our salad day. And it's tasty. So give us a minute to clean up this mess and we'll visit one more time before we call it a day. Well folks, there's our salad day. See, we've got the caprese salad with the calabrese pepperoni. Look forward to getting into that. We've got our, our take on J.B. Oliver's crispy duck made with chicken thighs. We've got my personal favorite, salad nichois. We've got this big Caesar salad. We had some more chicken that was cooked all the way through. And then we've got our Cobb salad. Uh, avocado start to turn a little bit on it. It's supposed to go after eat it pretty fast, I guess. So folks, just cause it's hot, that means you can't cook. We didn't do much cooking, but you can cook a little bit. You can sit out something nice. You, you can make something nice. If you don't want to cook at all, everything there, the only thing that was cooked was the potato or the tomatoes. You can buy those at Walmart and a deli cooked. So uh, there you go, folks. Uh, just because it's hot outside means you shouldn't eat well. So we appreciate your time. Uh, come back and visit us next time. And if by chance you're across having any catering needs, Give us a push. Uh, it's ec3.catering at harden.kyschools.us. Our nice cinematographer is going to put that on the program where you can find it. It's a mouthful. Uh, but we do, we are self sustaining in our culinary program through our catering efforts. Uh, the kids work really hard to provide uh, the supplies that we use in the class regularly. So if, you, if we can help you out, let us know. Let us know what you think about the show. If you have an idea what you'd like to see us do, other than shut up and go away, uh, it was a joke. Then, then let us know, okay? Uh, we'd love to hear from you, good or bad. But folks, we appreciate your time, and we'll see you soon.